and welcome to another computing video and this video it's another one in my sequence uh, introducing JavaScript programming for the web uh, trying to do it quite rapidly because we want to move quite quickly to advanced web programming where we're using modern client-side frameworks uh, but first of all we need to get the basics in there to uh, explain why we're doing this again I'm going to go fairly rapidly because I'm going to assume you've got a bit of programming background and that maybe you've even come across HTML and the DOM the document object model uh, uh, before so we'll go relatively quickly and we're not going to go into all of the tags in HTML and we're not going to go into all of the different methods that are available on the document object model API uh, we'll introduce what it is um, show show it in a little bit of action uh, but I figure that HTML and the document object model if you want to see the detail of what all of the tags that are available are and what all of the methods are available are well that's an API reference that's not a video okay so HTML itself, hypertext markup language and originally designed for static documents with links in. So back in 1993, when HTML first came around, you couldn't even embed an image. Uh, it was text and there was a hyperlink and you'd click on it and then it would open separately the image. Uh, now, obviously, it's evolved a bit since then, but that said, uh, it's not evolved all that far. I mean, we're up to HTML5 now, but that's over more than two decades so it's not that the versions are rattling through its enormous clip but it is an evolving uh, API uh, with new features coming along all the time so the current version of HTML is HTML5 and we are not going to go into all of the different kinds of tags uh, but uh, if you wanted you could for instance let's just go uh, inspect element just as the developer tools have uh, stuff for JavaScript they also have stuff for um, uh, they also have stuff for uh, having a look at HTML and sorry this is rather small but you can kind of pop through and see uh, all of the different HTML of this page and there we go let's make that a little bit bigger and so these slides they're in HTML using a, um, a slide maker called remark.js that uh, creates them out of markdown files um, and you can kind of see the divs for each of the slides depending on what is shown and what's not shown and on the current one that's there well let's have a little inspection of that and so that is a paragraph it's between p tags that's a paragraph saying the current version of html is html5 uh, but it's inside an li a list item and that is inside a ul an unordered list which is why you've got bullet points instead of numbers um, if i was to edit that which i think it looks like it's going to let me do and change that to an ordered list suddenly it would have one two uh, instead of the dots so um, the, we, we can inspect the the document and have an explore of a few that are out there to, to, to see what it's like uh, anyway let's keep on moving um, so we're not going to go into all of the different kinds of tags uh, but a basic HTML5 document looks something like this up the top here uh, we've got this thing here that says doc type HTML uh, now there have been various different versions of HTML over the years and different browsers used to be a little bit less compatible with each other and they would render some things a little bit differently um, and so they came up with this this doc type directive that you could put at the top of the document to uh, say how you wanted it rendered and the one for HTML5 just says doc type HTML and so this means read this as an HTML5 document and apply your HTML5 standards mode uh, instead of HTML4 or previous ones or quirks mode, etc, etc. HTML5 standards mode, please. Um, then we have uh, elements that are in angle brackets. And so overall, there's an HTML element here, and that's closed by a matching close tag down here. Um, in here you'll notice there is a title tag and I've said well this is my document and I've closed that one slash title um, that is part of the header but you might notice I've not actually put uh, head tags in there it turns out they're not necessary um, this here says I would like a heading and this element here has an attribute on it and this particular attribute is the class attribute and that is a particularly useful one uh, used in styling quite a lot and this is to say well this is this one's class is doc and the text inside that is a big header and here we can see a p tag for a paragraph saying here's a less list and that's a ul so it's an unordered list 
and we've got two list items and the thing that's kind of interesting in this one uh, is that we can notice that the children of this list item well we've got a text node but then we've got another element, this strong, or that has a text node inside it uh, before that one closes. And similarly, this one has a text node and then has an element. So uh, the children of elements in HTML in the document object model uh, can be a mixture of text nodes and other element nodes. And down here, we've got a line break, which is an empty tag. It's a tag BR, and I don't necessarily need to include that closing stripe, uh, that uh, forward slash there, but I can do. And that is a tag um, that doesn't take contents. All right, so let us just do the really obvious thing of if I go here, I've got a directory which is empty at the moment, but let's go fill it up and let us go and open uh, a file editor in here and let us go demo.html and let us copy our HTML5 document and let us uh, paste it in and save it and now let's go back over here and in the directory there it is demo.html and so here is my big header that was my h1 um, uh, so there's the h1 uh, the title we can see has turned up up there in the title on the tab. Uh, here's the list. That list has turned up as uh, two bullet points, and one of them's got italics, and one of them's got bold text. And we could expect, inspect the element, and sure enough, there we would find our HTML. But we would also notice that it has um, kind of inserted the uh, the head slash head uh, and the body slash body. It's inferred where the, where the head and the body tags uh, should go. OK, so that is the <clears throat> basics of HTML5. Uh, doc type to tell the browser to use HTML version 5. Elements go in angle brackets, e.g. h1, closed with a matching uh, close tag, e.g. slash h1. Elements can have attributes, such as the class attribute on the h1 element. Uh, they can have children that can be a mix of text nodes and other elements. And I haven't bothered with the head and body tags because, strictly speaking, they're not required. Uh, it can infer where they ought to be. OK, that's enough on describing HTML uh, itself for the moment. Um, in this unit, we're making web applications rather than just web pages. So one of the first things we want to do is load some JavaScript. And so we can do that with a script tag. And by default, the browser will assume that a script that we include is JavaScript, and it will execute it immediately. So let's show an example of this. And in this case, I've just put the JavaScript inside the script tags. Let's copy that. Let's put that into my document here. And let us go up here and reload the page. And so what we're going to notice is we should get a paragraph. And then this should write, this was executed immediately. So the script should execute before we get the next paragraph. Here's some more text. And sure enough, we do. Here is some text. This was executed immediately. And then here's some more text. And if we inspect it, uh, we can see there's the paragraph. Uh, we can see the script tags in there. Uh, we can see that what I inserted, the document.write, that was just a text node going between these paragraphs. And uh, there is the next paragraph tag containing its contents. OK, so far so good. That has managed to get some JavaScript to execute in the page, but it's not doing much terribly interesting except showing that it executes when it comes across that JavaScript. Um, now, let's, instead of writing into the parse stream of the HTML, as this was doing, uh, getting the, the, the parser of the HTML suddenly to receive this text to interpret as a node because it turned up uh, before the next paragraph, uh, let us instead make create a paragraph and make its text red using the document object model API. And so this is going to be some JavaScript. And it's going to use some uh, objects that are available to us uh, in the JavaScript context uh, when we're executing in a web page. And so one of these variables is called document. And that is a reference to the current HTML document that we're in. And so if I just pop over here and have a look at the um, have a look at the console. Uh, I can go document, and there it is. It's found. This is what the HTML document is. So th that document is in scope. I could go document uh, dot um, uh, get element by uh, let's go by tag name of p because I remember I put a couple of paragraphs in there. 
and that's going to give me a collection and it's found uh well it's found a couple of uh a, a couple of paragraphs and so it's found that one that's being highlighted in yellow as i mouse over it this one here and it's found that one up there is a paragraph tag uh this of course has not been highlighted because that was just a text node between the paragraphs if we look back in our inspector that was not a p element um so there we've referenced the document object and we've called a method uh, on its API that is part of the document object model API uh, but let's pop back here and let's do our example and so let us copy um, this text from here paste it into my document and so here I've said well it's an HTML5 document I've said here is some text here is a script to execute immediately and so what I'm saying is I'm declaring a variable which is an element and I would like to say document create me a, a p element a paragraph element on that element I would like you to set the attribute that is called style to this value and this value here happens to include some style information color red I've then said and now create me a text node and that node should contain this text was added and then I've said this element here that I just created, that p element, append this text node as a child uh, so that this text becomes part of this p element. Now I've done all of that and I've created this node but I haven't actually put it into the document yet. Uh, so to put it into the document, let's go in from the document, let's grab the body tag, that one that uh, was inferred. I didn't literally put into the document. And on the body tag, uh, on that body element, let us call append uh, with our element to go and stick our uh, paragraph that we've just created uh, is its last child for the moment because don't forget this is getting executed immediately so this is going to be its last child except that once it's done then there's going to be another child added so we should see a paragraph with here some text then we should see in red this text was added red because we styled that paragraph element to show it in the color red and then we should see the paragraph here is some more text afterwards and so let us save that let's pop back to the browser and let's hit refresh and here we see our text in red this text was added between the two and in this case if we look in the inspector we can see that because we created it as an element p uh, you know an element with the tag p paragraph uh, sure enough it does have um, it is a paragraph and so if I was to pop into the console and I was to document get elements by tag name this time I should get three of them because it should include that one was that was added because this time it is a p element and sure enough I can highlight it there it is in yellow being highlighted that is the one that it found um, okay so so far so good that's the document object model API and rather than writing text to be consumed by the HTML parser we're interacting with the document object model API by calling methods on this global document object and again we're not going to look at all the methods that are available on the DOM API suffice it to say there are methods for creating nodes methods for finding nodes methods for modifying nodes etc it's an API that lets us programmatically alter the document object model programmatically alter the document that is showing in the browser all right next thing I'm going to suggest that we want to do is at the moment we've got this script just sitting here um, in line in the HTML file let's move it out so that it is in its own file and so let's change it so that um, well there I've said runme.js but uh, in fact let's uh, let's call it demo.js uh, just because that might be a little bit more consistent and now let us from there let's take the text the JavaScript out from the script tags and let's just paste it straight into demo.js save that and if you recall I recommend going use strict on all of your uh, JavaScript files so, so let's just put that in at the top use strict and over here now in the this is empty at the moment and so I'm gonna say well this script it's not coming from between the tags instead it's coming from a source you're gonna load this from uh, and in the context of you know the current path you've been loading from I want you to get uh, the file called demo.js and that contains my script and now let's go and see what that does in the browser and so let's hit refresh and still does exactly the same 
this text was added it has still executed the script uh, we can see that now the script tag in the inspector refers to demo.js uh, we could um, go and uh, in the debugger we would find okay if we open that up there is demo.js and we could if we want uh, wanted to we could go and add a breakpoint on that particular line and is it going to do it for me yes there we go it has now stopped on the breakpoint in the debugger that is built into my browser and if I wanted it to continue so here it stopped we've seen that it's done here is some text uh, which was um, in the uh, so here is some text was that bit there just before it called this script and so now in this script uh, it's created the element it set the attributes it's created the text node it just hasn't yet put this stuff together and put it into the document uh, and so I could do typical debugging steps I could step over lines uh, or I could um, let's just cancel the breakpoint and hit continue and let it finish rendering okay so there we've got now a very little bit of JavaScript being loaded from a separate JavaScript file and some things to notice about this uh, so JavaScript contains that it still does the same thing uh, notice that the paragraph is rendering between the lines of text from the HTML this means that the browser has to stop parsing when it sees the script tag it has to load this script it's got to go and make a web request to go and get that JavaScript file then it's got to parse that JavaScript file then it's got to execute that JavaScript file before it can carry on parsing the HTML because it might be that we're going to go and insert some tags or some elements and so this is true not just for this JavaScript file but for any JavaScript file um, that if we've uh, gone HTML and here's some elements and we, we put it up near the top uh, well by default the browser has to stop go fetch the file finish parsing it run it and then it can keep on parsing our HTML um, now this means that well the browser had to stop when it had only rendered part of our page and go and make this network request and if you had a lot of scripts in there uh, this could make your page slow uh, so even assuming no processing delays uh, the speed of light means that for a server on the other side of the world that request could take 200 milliseconds so getting you know light around the fiber optic fibers to make the request and then the for the reply to come back um, so our page could become slow uh, if we were doing this um, and uh, roughly speaking if you have a look at some of the the you know high performance browser networking etc it talks quite a lot about latency of pages uh, actually we're not going to worry too much about that this in this unit but I thought it would be worth showing you the defer and async uh, attributes that you can put on script tags and so if we want to tell the browser look okay I'm showing you this script tag now but actually I want you to run it after you have finished loading all the HTML from the page after you after you defer it uh, until a little bit later on and so let's now pop into here and let us say defer or let's say defer equals quote defer uh, just for compatibility with some slightly older browsers and now if we go here and hit refresh uh, now our text has moved to the end and it's because we've deferred the execution of this script that was adding that red text uh, until after it has finished parsing all of the HTML of the page um, we could if we wanted go and say look I would actually like you just to do this asynchronously go make the request and do it when it comes back and I'm sort of not terribly troubled about uh, when that happens and in that in that case uh, well let's go and reload that and oh, in this case it looks like it's always going to end up happening afterwards because actually parsing HTML is pretty quick compared to making an HTTP request even on my local machine and so that red text is still ending up at the end um, okay so that was defer and async uh, which are these attributes that can change the behavior of when your script is run now so far we've seen a very simple example of altering the document object model from code uh, but when we write an application in the browser we're also going to need to go the other way we're going to need to call our code from actions the user makes on the HTML and there's a couple of ways that you could do this uh, you could for instance uh, put uh, an element in there and you could set an 
uh, an attribute that in this case is on click an event handler attribute and you could say I would like you to JavaScript alert hello actually I don't really need the JavaScript colon at the beginning there um, and that ought to uh, run so let's just go and paste that in uh, I'm not let's remove the script tags let's just put the button in there uh, let's go reload that and now I have a button here that if I click on it alert hello and just to show that I don't need that JavaScript colon let's delete that save it hit refresh and alert hello there we go it, it, it's popped up a little window alert for me um, so this is one way that we can call into JavaScript based on user actions on the page um, alternatively though uh, we could also attach an event listener via the DOM API, the Document Object Model API. Uh, so we could say, well, let's have a button that is create element of this button. And on this button, I would like to add an event listener that is going to listen to some particular event. And here I put it as mouse down just to show you something that's not click. Uh, and then a handler, which might be some function. So I'm assuming that I've set uh, in a function variable um, uh, in a, a, a function for handling that event. Uh, well, I tell you what, let's go and do this right now in here. So let us go, uh, let's put script source equals demo.js back in. And uh, I'm not going to run that one deferred or async. I'm going to let it put the button in the middle of the page. And so in this case, let us create an element that is a button. Let's use let be uh, you know good ES5 practice uh, sorry well ES5 augmented with let from ES6 and uh, I don't need to turn that button red but what I do need to do um, let's say this is going to be this button's going to be called alert and that's going to get appended and so far so far I've not yet added the action so at the moment that button's not going to do anything uh, but now let us go element dot um, add event listener and this is going to be a listener for click events and it's going to be an anonymous anonymous function that takes an event and what I would like it to do is I would like it to alert of I was clicked let's save that reload the page and now there we go I was clicked and so in this case we've added an event handler instead of by putting it literally in the tags of the HTML that's being parsed by the HTML parser uh, instead we've added it programmatically uh, through the document object model API um, generally speaking I tend to recommend this version it seems to me to be a little bit more uh, flexible um, there is a little bit of a caveat that I found in some cases which is that um, uh, if you do this inside a function and you create your anonymous function there and then, uh, it can turn out to be a little bit tricky in terms of, OK, how do I remove this event hit listener if I want to remove that event listener? Because if I create two anonymous functions, they're not necessarily going to end up being considered equal and it can be fight harder to find your handler to remove it uh, generally speaking though don't worry too much about that uh, because all of this stuff about putting the elements in and wiring up um, event listeners for the different actions typically whatever framework we use is actually going to do that for us OK, but while I'm at it, uh, let me show you something about why you should prefer let from HTML, uh, let from uh, ECMA script 6 over var from ECMA script 5 from JavaScript ES5. Uh, so what I'm going to do is let me just grab this code and let's just paste it in here. And so all I've got is a div that has an ID Call, uh, attribute called render here uh, and the ID attribute is a little bit unique because there is a function on the DOM uh, API which is get element by ID and so I'm going to be able to say document dot get element by ID give it the render here string and it will get me that element uh, now this is including source demo dot JS and in this case I would like my demo dot JS to do something a little bit different what I would like it to do uh, I would like it to add three buttons for me and I'm going to go f with a for loop and uh, so first of all let's go and get the element render here because this is where I'm going to insert those buttons in between 
um, the tags effectively of render here. In there is where it's going to put the buttons. And for var i is zero, uh, i is less than three, i plus plus, create me a button. Create me a text node that says button, you know, number, whatever, button zero, button one, button two. Uh, append that as the label. So now I've got a button that's going to ha have the text button zero, button one, button two. And I'm going to create a listener for click events. And what I would like that to do is I would just like it to go window.alert of i. I would just like it to tell me what i was. And then I would like to put that into the document. So this should give me three buttons. Uh, let's paste this in, save it, and go back to my browser. Up here, we load it up. I now have button zero, button one, button two. And because I've not put div or any block elements that kind of lay out down the screen, <clears throat> they're just rendering side by side across the screen. And now, uh, now remember, when we did this, for var i is zero, i is less than three, i plus plus, and in here, we're going to go window.alert of i. And now here's the puzzler for you. Pause the video and think about it. Um, what value do you think is going to get alerted for each button? OK, and let's try this for each of the buttons. And so button zero is going to come up. This is button zero, and it alerts three. Uh, button one, uh, this is button one, this is the button from when i is one and I click on it and it alerts three. Uh, button two, this is the button from when i is two and it alerts three. Uh, okay, so what's going on here? Um, well, what's happening is this var i, uh, don't forget that JavaScript uh, ES5, it has, uh, for var, it has global scope or it has function scope. It doesn't have block scope. This here, where well, we're not in a function, so it's got global scope. So there is one global variable called i. And so every time I've created this anonymous function uh, here um, for the uh, the click listener, the event handler, and I've talked about i in it, every time that has closed over the same global variable i. And at the end of this for loop, uh, we went I was two and then at the end of the loop it went I plus plus and I became three and it did the condition and it didn't rerun the loop again but the global variable I is still three and so when I click that quite correctly it's going window.alert what's in that global variable I it's three because they're all pointing to the same one um, now it turns out that uh, trying to change this whoops Uh, so what happened? I here is global. Uh, when our event listener closed over the variable, it closed over the global variable. And so all three buttons reference the same I variable, which at the end of the loop was three. Uh, sorry, the last few slides hadn't loaded because I'd edited my slide deck before I'd hit uh, refresh. So I was just hitting refresh there to load the last few slides that I've written. Um, <clears throat> now, it turns out that changing this to function scope wouldn't help. So let us take all of this code and let's put it inside an anonymous function and then we're going to immediately apply it and so this is going to be a little different than shown there because I think in the slide I have forgotten to uh, do the code that's immediately going to apply this so that declares a function but it doesn't run it yet I've got to put the, the uh, open parentheses at close parentheses to actually run that function okay so this now this var i it is inside a function it should have function scope and so let's go back here and uh, let's reload our buttons. And if I click button zero, three. Click button one, three. Click button two, three. And so the problem here is that, well, OK, it's now got function scope, but it's got function scope. So that is now the same variable i in scope all the way from this curly brace down to this curly brace. And so once again, Every time we've been adding our um, event listener and an anonymous function there, uh, it has been closing over the same variable i, even though now it has function scope instead of global scope. And so all three are still lined up to the same variable i. Uh, incidentally, the reason that we're not getting it up here uh, is because on the way through in the for loop, uh, it's been appending that and it's been turning that into a string uh, each time that it's been adding. And so we've got different strings because we've done the append, uh, whereas in this case it is still referring to the same variable um, okay 
So what is the solution? Uh, well, the solution to make this behave a bit better um, is to use block scope. And so let is going to solve the problem. Let's just change, um, oops, sorry. Let us just change the variable in the for loop to use let. I'm not even going to worry about changing the other ones yet. So let's just go in here and this for var i, I'm going to change that from function scope to say now that has block scope. And for a for loop, this means that um, it's going to be a different variable i every time we come through here. And so when this function closes over it, the first time it goes through, it will close over a, 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 a variable i with block scope that has value 0. The second time it will close over a different variable i that has block scope uh, and value 1. The third time with value 2, uh, etc. And so this now, if I reload it, and I hit button 0, now I get 0, as I wanted. And if I hit button 1, I get 1, as I wanted. And if I hit button 2, I get 2, as I wanted. Uh, uh, so this is a little bit of a difference that you'll find comes up uh, between let and var. And is one of the reasons that I recommend just use let. Just don't worry about var. Browsers these days understand let. Let operates much more like variables in uh, other programming languages that you might be use, uh, used to. Block scope is something that is that is quite useful to have. And so generally speaking, I recommend using let. All right, I'm going to stop the video there. And the tutorial is going to do, um, uh, and I'll do a video of the tutorial as well, uh, but that is going to do a slightly larger example uh, that is going to render Conway's Game of Life and let you click through it and start rendering um, stuff on the screen based on data um, that's being held in JavaScript.